Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. It's time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks written by Al Lewis. Well, old friends like old songs are said to be mellow with age. Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, feels that this is uh, very definitely true. Especially when it comes to our beloved principal, Osgood Conklin. Although Mr. Conklin isn't exactly old or actually a friend, he does remind me of an old song. Sweetest little fellow, everybody knows, don't know what to call him, but he's mighty lacking in something. <laughs> <laughs> what it is formed the topic of our conversation last Friday morning when my landlady and I sat down to a particularly early breakfast. Here's your coffee, Connie. Thanks, Mrs. Davis. I can't understand your constant friction with Mr. Conklin. He isn't naturally mean, is he? I should say not. He's had to practice for years. <laughs> oh, it isn't all his fault. I think a lot of his bad temper is due to his high blood pressure. Mm, I guess it is. When did he get his high blood pressure, Connie? Five years ago, this coming February. I see. Tell me, Connie, when did you join the faculty at Madison? Five years ago, this coming February. <laughs> <laughs> that is a coincidence, isn't it? It could be, but I'm sure Mr. Conklin doesn't think so. You're so right, Mrs. Davis. He blames me for almost every little accident that occurs at school. That's why he's made me school safety supervisor. It's his ironic way of getting even. Getting even? For what? Oh, a few little incidents that occurred last week. What kind of incident? Well, like last Wednesday after school. I happened to be leaving the building just as Mr. Conklin started down the steps, and I noticed a pencil lying right in his path. Naturally, I didn't want him to slip on it. Did you pick it up? Oh, there wasn't time for that. All I could do was jump forward and nudge him aside. Well, that certainly couldn't have made him angry. I nudged him down the whole flight of stairs. <laughs> My goodness, Connie, was he badly hurt? Oh, he wasn't hurt at all. Just a few lacerations here and there. And his glasses were as good as new after some minor repairs. Minor repairs? Two new lenses. <laughs> anyway, now you know why Mr. Conklin declared this to be safety week at Madison. Well, I think it's a splendid idea. If everyone took proper precautions, accidents couldn't happen. Except to Mr. Conklin. Now, if you'll excuse me, i better get ready. Walter Denton's picking me up early today so I can check things before Mr. Conklin's inspection tour. All right, dear. Oh, before you go, would you like another egg or some more toast? No, thanks, Miss Davis. If I'm going to travel in Walter's car, I've got to watch my weight. The last time I rode up front with him, the back wheels didn't touch the ground once. <laughs> Your car's running very smoothly today, Walter. What'd you do to it? Well, on account of this being safety week, I decided to give it a thorough overhauling, Miss Brooks. So last night I took off the drive shaft, dismantled the transmission, and removed the rear end. <laughs> you know something? It goes better without them. <laughs> I put them all back, Miss Brooks, but I fixed everything up first. Can't be too careful with a car nowadays, you know. I like your attitude, Walter. In fact, you are hereby granted permission to help me with the safety campaign at school today. Ah, oh, I'll be glad to, Miss Brooks. Of course, when I first heard about it, I thought it was just another arbitrary political move made by old Marblehead, uh, Mr. Conklin. <laughs> you know, to get himself in good with the Board of Education. But his daughter Harriet convinced me that it was for all our goods. All our goods? <laughs> yes, ma'am. She sure is a sensible girl, and pretty, too. Yeah, she is pretty. And Harriet's a good student as well. I know. But most important of all, she's got sensational taste. Taste? She's been going steady with me for over a year. <laughs> yeah, she is pretty. <laughs> I'm taking her to the football rally tonight. We're having it out on the campus. You'll be there, won't you, Miss Brooks? As safety supervisor, I guess it's part of my job. Oh, we're not going to do anything dangerous. Just the usual normal pregame frenzy. Now, we'll have a nice big bonfire, and my pal Stretch Snodgrass is bringing a giant firecracker to open the festivities. Now, wait a minute, Walter. A carefully supervised bonfire may be all right, but the giant firecracker is definitely out. 
But why, Miss Brooks? Stretch knows how to handle fireworks. Gosh, you should have seen him last 4th of July. I did see him last 4th of July. He passed me on a skyrocket. <laughs> Look, Walter, I know Stretch is a dear pal of yours and a great football player, but he's not very bright. Well, I'll admit he's no Albert Einfeld, but... <laughs> Very careful, Miss Brooks. No, I'm sorry, Walter. Mr. Conklin's going to be at that rally, and I don't want anyone to get hurt, especially Mr. Conklin. I've had a couple of unfortunate encounters with our principal already this week. I know you have. You've done a wonderful job on him so far. <laughs> I was there when you helped him down the steps Wednesday after school. Boy, he sure was mad. Your presence didn't help matters any, Walter. Well, gosh, all I did was hand him back his glasses and say I was sorry. That isn't quite all you did, Walter. You handed him his glasses and you said you were sorry, and then you giggled right in his face. <laughs> well, I couldn't help it, Miss Brooks. In times of great emotional stress, I always giggle. Mm. Uh, well, here's the dear old school, Miss Brooks. They're pretty crowded. I thought we'd find a parking space easy this early. There's one there, Walter. Right in front of that car that just pulled up to the curb. You think I can squeeze in there, Miss Brooks? Of course. Now, just go straight back. Mm -hmm. That's it. Back, back, further, back, back, back. <laughs> You've got about a foot. <laughs> Gee, we gave him a pretty bad whack. I wonder whose car it is. I'll get out and look on the steering wheel. Don't strain yourself, Miss Brooks. <laughs> It's my car you've partially destroyed. Mr. Conklin. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Conklin, but <clears throat> I'm sure there wasn't any great damage. Our rear bumper took most of the strain. Your rear bumper took most of the glass out of my headlights, too. I'll get those fixed up for you in a jiffy, Mr. Conklin. I'll just run over to the repair shop. Shut and... up. <laughs> Leave it to me, Mr. Conklin. I'll see that it's all taken care of. Oh, your front door is still open. Yes. Yes, I know. It does that whenever I'm hurled to the sidewalk. <laughs> I'll close it at once. Oh, let me do it for you, Mr. Conklin. It's not safe to have our car doors swinging open, you know. I'll get it. <clears throat> Seems to be stuck. <clears throat> Miss Brooks, did it ever occur to you that there might be a reason why my car door won't close? A reason? What reason? It's simply that my arm is still in it! <laughs> oh, I'm sure we'll be able to... Your arm? Oh, is it hurt, Mr. Conklin? I'm becoming inured to pain. <laughs> Now that you've started your day in an ideal manner for a safety supervisor, I suggest that we continue on into school. Of course, sir. I... Just one thing, Miss Brooks. I want you to do me a small favor. Oh, anything, Mr. Conklin. What is it? Will you give me a five-minute head start into the building? <laughs> Well, we've still got a few minutes before class, Walter. Come into my room and we'll map out the rest of the day's safety measures. There are quite a few things that must be fixed around school. Oh, just a minute, Miss Brooks. There's Stretch Snodgrass over by the drinking fountain. Maybe he can give us a hand. He's very good at repair work. Hiya, Stretch. Hello, Walter. Morning, Miss Brooks. Morning, Stretch. How would you like to help us out today? This is safety week, you know, and Mr. Conklin's going on an inspection tour this afternoon. Yeah, I know. Harriet was telling me about it. I think it's a swell idea. And it's for all our goods. <laughs> there must be another way to say that. <laughs> Stretch, all I want you to do is... Wait a second, what's that you're carrying? Well, this is a giant firecracker, Miss Brooks. I was going to use it for the rally tonight, but I just got it all wet when I took a drink. Got a match, Waller? Oh, sure, Stretch. Here. <laughs> Stretch, you're not going to light that monster in school. Oh, of course not, Miss Brooks. I'm just trying to dry the fuse. Oh, there we are. Uh, just hold the match here for a little while, and then... See, it's lit! Gosh, I better throw it out the window, huh? No, Stretch, you might hurt some of the kids out there. Here, give it to me. I'll throw it into the supply room. There won't be anybody in there this early. In she goes. <laughs> oh, 
thank goodness we got rid of that thing without hurting anyone. Look, Miss Brooks, the doorknob. It's turning. But who could possibly have been in there? Who else? <laughs> Mr. Conklin. <laughs> Quiet, Walter. Gosh, Mr. Conklin, what did you do to your tie? It's all black. <laughs> Who threw the hand grenade at me, Mr. He, he went that way, Mr. Conklin. We didn't get a very good look at him. You weren't burned, were you? No, no, but a large box of ink wells fell on my right foot. <laughs> you better go downstairs to the infirmary, Mr. Conklin. We'll help you. Here, give me your hand, Mr. Conklin. You'll get it later. <laughs> I'll try to limp over to the freight elevator and go down to the first aid room. Oh, this is painful. Boy, it's a good thing our school has an elevator. That's one thing about good old Madison, boy. It's a pretty darn modern kind of a school that has a self-operating brand new elevator. If that boy doesn't stop babbling, I'll break my remaining foot on him. <laughs> now help me into this elevator, Miss Brooks. Yes, sir. Here, I'll open the door for you. Now, in you go, Mr. Conklin. Thanks. That's funny. The light seems to be... I'm splendid, Miss Brooks. <laughs> but where's the elevator? Lying on it, Mr. Conklin. You, you didn't fall very far. Not far at all. Just don't get nervous, Mr. Conklin. That's right, sir. I'll go get a rope and we'll have you up in nothing flat. Gee, I know he doesn't like me very much, but I can't help feeling sorry for Mr. Conklin. First, his car's wrecked, and then he gets slightly bombed, and now he's at the bottom of an elevator shaft. Miss Brooks. I know, Walter. <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment, but first, here is Vern Smith. Now, proof that brushing teeth right after eating with Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Continuous research, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice research on tooth decay. Eminent dental authorities supervised hundreds of college men and women for over two years. One group always brushed their teeth with Colgate's right after eating. The other followed their usual dental care. The group using Colgate Dental Cream as directed, using Colgate's exclusively, showed a startling reduction in average number of cavities, far less tooth decay. The other group developed new cavities at a much higher rate. No other dentifrice offers proof of these results. Modern research indicates decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst after meals or snacks. When you brush your teeth with Colgate's right after eating, you help remove acids before they can harm enamel. Yes, Colgate's contains all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient, for effective daily dental care. And remember, Col Colgate's cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Always use Colgate Dental Cream right after eating to help prevent new cavities, help stop tooth decay before it starts. Well, after placing an out-of-order sign on the elevator and instructing the custodian, Mr. Jensen, to repair the safety gate as soon as possible, I resumed my hobby, teaching. Just before lunch period, however, I decided I'd better see how my deputy safety supervisors were making out. I found Harriet Conklin and Walter Denton at the down stairway near the elevator. Hi, Miss Brooks. Walter's just trying to fix this handrail. It's been pretty loose all week. Good for you, Walter. How are you doing with it? Yeah, pretty good, Miss Brooks. I'm trying to get this section off so I can repair it. Well, keep up the good work, kids. I'm going in and check with Mr. Jensen about that elevator. Come in. Hi, Mr. Jensen. No, Miss Brooks, I'm not. You're not what? Let me recapitulate for you. You just knocked on my door, then I said, come in. You did so. And as you entered my office, you said, hi, Mr. Jensen. I, in turn, rejected this description as spurious. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Jensen. I'm... I am not a bit high, Miss Brooks. 
<laughs> and such an allegation during school hours might well mean the beginning of the end for me as custodian of this establishment. Oh, I forgot how literal-minded you are, Mr. Jensen. It won't happen again. Now, let's get down to cases. There you go again. <laughs> There's alcoholism in your family somewhere. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Jensen. Look where? I mean, listen. Then why don't you say listen? It's not such a terribly difficult word for an English teacher now, is it? Of course not. Now, just relax <laughs> and tell me simply what you want of me. There's a good girl. Where's a good girl? <laughs> Great, now I'm doing it. <laughs> Mr. Jensen, all I want to know is how soon you're going to fix the elevator. The elevator isn't broken, Miss Brook. It's just the latch on the street door level. I've sent out for the small part it needs, and when that comes, I'll take care of the matter. Good. Will you let me know when it's fixed? I won't have to, Miss Brooks. I shall merely remove the out-of-order sign, and then we'll all know, won't we? <laughs> I suppose we will, Mr. Jensen. <laughs> you, sh you shouldn't worry about the elevator, Miss Brooks. I'm a natural-born handyman. I have six children, you know. <laughs> I know. How are they, Mr. Jensen? Oh, fine, thanks. Just full of the dickens. Oh, read a lot, do they? No, but... They... <laughs> <laughs> Say, you got me that time, didn't you? <laughs> now, before you go, Miss Brooks, though, I'd like to be sure you don't consider me prudish or narrow-minded be because of my seeming resentment of your opening remark. You remember about my being high? Oh, of course not, Mr. Jensen. Just, I'd... you know, just between you and me, I, I like nothing better after working hours than to stop in at some cozy bar and grill and have myself five or six jiggers of television. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Miss Brooks. Umbriago, Mr. Jensen. <laughs> mm. I don't like to curtail a teacher's lunch period like this, Miss Brooks, but I'll explain the reason in a moment. First, how are things in the safety campaign progressing? Oh, fine, Mr. Conklin. The elevator will be attended to very shortly, and everyone is pitching in to help put safety week over in a big way. Good. And, Mr. Conklin... May I say that in spite of some of the unfortunate incidents of the day, you look very well indeed. I do? Yes, sir. Your bandages are extremely neat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. They do a nice job downstairs in the infirmary. But about our necessity for speeding things up, I just received a call from the Board of Education, Miss Brooks, and they're sending a new inspector over today to observe the result of our safety plan. Today? But when, Mr. Conklin? Any time now. He's a Mr. Blanchard, very good friend of Mr. Stone, the head of the board. I'm going to make a last-minute tour before he comes, of course, but first, Miss Brooks, I'd like you to look at this electric fan. Electric fan in October? It's a safety model. If this sample meets with Blanchard's approval, we may put these in every room during the warm weather. Here, I'll start it. Now, go ahead, Miss Brooks. Put your finger in the fan. My finger? Go ahead. Perfectly safe. Well, thanks just the same, Mr. Conklin, but I prefer the old-fashioned manicure where the fingers stay attached to the hand. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are rubber blades, soft as tissue paper. Watch, I'll put my finger in. In, out. In, out. See? Nothing happens to it at all. It's a wonderful idea. Well... We'd better get going now. I'd like to inspect the fire extinguishing apparatus. Yes, sir. Oh, I'll open it. I'll open it. Hi, Daddy. Miss Brooks. Walter and I have been going over the wiring in the building. You know, for loose connections and stuff. Yeah. It wouldn't do for anything to go wrong the last day of safety week, would it, Mr. Conklin, huh? <laughs> I couldn't think of a more auspicious time to leave my office. If Mr. Blanchard is coming over, I'd better tidy up the place a bit, Daddy. I brought some glass wax for the window. It'll just take us a few minutes. You come along with me, Mr. Conklin. We'll check the fire apparatus. Very well, Miss Brooks. Now, you check the lamp connections, Walter, and I'll dust off Daddy's desk. Okay, Harriet. I'd better take this fan off it so that you can... Oops! Oh, gosh, I dropped it. I hope it didn't break. Well, snap it on. Okay. Gosh, nothing happens. It's busted, all right. Oh, what does your dad need a fan for in this kind of weather anyway? It must be his high blood pressure, Walter. But don't worry about it. We'll just put this rubber one away and get the one he's got in his closet. <laughs> it's an old-fashioned one with steel blades, but it's better than nothing. Oh, sure. 
Uh, what's the difference as long as there's something cooling off, old Marblehead? Ew, your daddy. <laughs> The uh, nozzle of this fire extinguisher doesn't seem to be hanging just right. What do you think, Miss Brooks? Well, I'm not really an expert nozzle hanger, Mr. Conklin, but <laughs> maybe I can straighten it out a bit. Uh, be careful with it, Miss Brooks. When tilted at a certain angle, these things can be treacherous. Oh, I'll be very careful, sir. Just take it like this and... <laughs> <laughs> you certainly were careful, Miss Brooks. <laughs> Not a drop missed me. <laughs> Take my hanky, Mr. Conklin. Here, I'll put this thing back where it's... Ever... <laughs> put that thing down! Yes, sir. Oh! <laughs> oh, my foot! Oh, it cut right through to my instep. Now I've got to go down to the infirmary again. Well, what can I say to you, Mr. Conklin? There's I... nothing you can say to me now, Miss Brooks but I'll have a few things to say to you when I come back upstairs. I'm afraid you'll have to walk down, Mr. Conklin. The out-of-order sign is still on the elevator. Maybe if I help you... You've helped me enough for one day, thank you. Now go away. If I take it easy, I think I can negotiate these stairs. Wish I had my glasses on. Oh, well, I'll just take a firm grip on the handrail. Oh, uh, about that handrail, Mr. Conklin... <laughs> I got the handrail for the staircase with me. Just in time, Stretch. Throw it down to Mr. Conklin. <laughs> What's Daddy doing down there, Miss Brooks? Mr. Blanchard is waiting for him in his office. What? Quick, Harriet, you take your father into the infirmary, and I'll go back and stall Mr. Blanchard along. Is there anything I can do, Miss Brooks? Yes, Walter. Stay away from Mr. Conklin until we have danger week. Is someone <laughs> going to help me down the rest of these steps or not? I'll be right there, Daddy. Straighten things out up here, will you, fella? Sure, Harriet. Gosh, this fire extinguisher is a mess. But we better hang an out-of-order sign on it so Mr. Jensen fixes it up before the safety inspection. You're right, Walter. Wait a minute. Well, here's one right by the elevator. Out of order. I'll just borrow this for a while. <laughs> So you see, Mr. Blanchard, as safety supervisor for Madison High, I've worked very closely with our principal. In other words, Miss Brooks, you've been at Mr. Conklin's side constantly. Oh, yes, indeed. I've been at his side, on his feet, in his hair. Uh, that is to say, <laughs> we've worked hand in hand all through the week. Fine. I've never met Mr. Conklin, but my friends on the board tell me he's always leaned towards safety in the school. Right again, Mr. Blanchard. Mr. Conklin leaned a long way today. <laughs> uh, he's even thinking of putting in safety first fans. See, like this one on his desk. I'll just turn it on for you. Now, put your finger in here, Mr. Blanchard. <laughs> but, Miss Brooks. Oh, go ahead. You only live once. <laughs> uh, it's rubber, it's just like tissue paper. These things make me nervous, Miss Brooks. However, if you insist, I'll insert my cane among the blades. Here we are. Timber! Shut this thing off! Yes, sir. I can't say I like my introduction to Madison High, Miss Brooks. If this is your idea of a joke... Oh, no, sir, it's no joke. Somebody must have switched fans on me. Well, I think perhaps I'd better meet Mr. Conklin and... Ouch! One of those flying splinters lodged in my thumb. Let's see. Oh, come on, Mr. Blanchard. We'd better go down to the infirmary. The infirmary? But it's just a sliver. I oh, can... please, sir, follow me. That's one thing we insist on at Madison. Prompt care must be taken of the slightest accident. But, Mr. Conklin, I've got to see him and Well, this... this is a shortcut. Yes, Mr. Blanchard, in this institution, we believe in safeguarding the health and well-being of every man, woman, and beast. A child. <laughs> Where are we going, Miss Brooks? Well, fortunately, we won't have to walk down to the first aid room. I see the out-of-order sign has been removed from the elevator. An elevator? What if it's only one floor down, we... Oh, I wouldn't think of it, Mr. Blanchard. The stairs are not safe without the handrail. Here, I'll open the door for you. After you, sir? Uh, thank you, but the light seems to be... Ah! Oh, no! Pardon me, Miss 
Brooks, but I understand Mr. Blanchard has arrived. Tell me, has he been here very long? No, sir, he just landed. <laughs> he wanted to see the infirmary, so I, I thought I'd take him down, and the out-of-order sign is off the elevator, as you can see, so it was only natural for uh, me uh, to suppose... Stop that babbling, Miss Brooks. Gentlemen. I've got to meet this gentleman. If he's in the elevator, that's where I... <laughs> Oh, well. Look out below! <laughs> Mr. Blanchard, Mr. Conklin. Mr. Conklin, Mr. Blanchard. <laughs> Eve Arden, as our Miss Brooks, returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives K. Dumit's magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster cream shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, luster cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a luster cream shampoo. So gentle, luster cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight, yes, tonight, try luster cream shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, after Mr. Blanchard awarded Madison High a safety pennant, with a picture of a skull and crossbones on it. <laughs> I left the scene of the crime and hurried home. That night, I phoned Mr. Conklin to see if he felt any better. And just as I hung up, my landlady, Mrs. Davis, came into the room. Was that Mr. Boynton, Connie? No, Mrs. Davis. He's still away at that biologist convention, but he'll be back next week. I just had the most peculiar conversation with Mr. Conklin. What did he say? He just recited a little rhyme to me. It's one I haven't heard since I was a kid. A rhyme? Which one, Connie? He just said, sticks and stones can break my bones, and you didn't do a bad job either. <laughs> Next week, tune in to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Conklin is played by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Leonard Smith, Bob Jellison, and Ed Begley. Here's good shaving news. Three men out of every four can get more comfortable, actually smoother shaves with Palmolive Brushless Shaving Cream. This is not just a claim. Here's the proof. 1,297 men tried the Palmolive brushless way to shave described on the tube. And no matter how they shaved before, three men out of every four got more comfortable, actually smoother shaves. Try Palmolive brushless yourself. See if you don't get more comfortable, actually smoother shaves the proved Palmolive brushless way. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North, the exciting, fun-packed adventures of an amateur detective and his beautiful wife. Tune in Tuesday evening over most of these same stations. And be with us again next week at this same time for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.